Welcome everyone. This is Jim Spohr, founding IZIP board member. It's my great pleasure today to welcome you to the first IZIP event of 2024. Our distinguished speaker is Professor Lou Freund, who's also an IZIP fellow and has been working away on the T-shaped skills and Mighty Me uh, platform. I think you'll all be pretty excited by the progress that Lou has made over the last few years. And um, I just wanna give some housekeeping reminders before I turn it over to Lou. Uh, number one, as you heard, this meeting is being recorded. So uh, please uh, plan it accordingly. Um, uh, please stay on mute and put your questions in the chat. I'll put something in the chat right now. If you wanna introduce yourself in the chat, that's perfectly fine. Um, also, uh, after the event, the recording and presentation link will be emailed to all of you who registered, whether you're on the call or not, you'll get the link if you have to drop off early. Um, and also the Eyes of mm -hmm. Event blog will be updated with a recording and presentation so you can find it by going to the Eyes of website and looking in the uh, blog area. I will uh, turn it over to Lou. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jim. And um, I do appreciate your introduction and thank you for uh, setting up this uh, webinar for me. I'd like to also introduce Pavel Sava, who's been working with us over the last year and a half in developing the platform. And he's been an indescribable uh, asset to our uh, program and uh, wanna express a lot of appreciation to Pavel. Um, hello and happy new year. And thanks for joining me for this webinar. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Mighty Me, a web-based platform using AI for representing your experience and knowledge modeled on the T-shaped paradigm. In my talk today, I'm going to introduce the T-shaped concept, show the Mighty Me platform, take your questions after about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then you'll be able to get on the platform with your LinkedIn sign-in and start your Mighty T journey. The T-shaped concept or the idea of the T-shaped professional refers to the view that each person possesses some level of depth in one or more disciplines and also breadth representing one or more areas of competency that we have gained through experience um, and cross-system boundary uh, uh, ac activities as we engage in our work. As we approach the question of what this means and how it relates to each person, we referred to the segment representing depth as the stem of the T, representing analytic thinking and problem solving, where you're deep, where you look at uh, your depth in at least one discipline. And we referred to the top of the T as the T top, representing breadth, understanding, and communication across many disciplines or many systems. Boundary crossing competencies are reflected by, by teamwork, communication, experience and, and perspective, networking and critical thinking, global understanding, project management, and so forth. This diagram has been prevalent in the literature and is well recognized as a, as a sort of a, a, a platform for discussing T-shaped concepts. But the question we want to ask ourselves is, how T-shaped am I? A resume is just a historical summary. How T-shaped are you infers that the T is a point in time, but it also has to be cumulative. The T reflects professional and other experiences, while a resume is typically professionally oriented reflecting activities and experience. The dimensions of the T are not reflected directly in the resume. Some level of inference about the T content of past experiences will be needed. In addition, if one person is T-shaped and we consider many people to be T-shaped or everyone in that case, then there's the idea that teams of people also have T-shapes that there are evidences of breadth and 
depth in team T shapes, uh, which is comprised of the individuals on the team. Mighty Me began with the idea of trying to think about how we could get to the question of analytic and analytic thinking and problem solving by looking at a person's experience. We, we, we noticed and noted that memberships, authorships, and recognition represent some aspect of analytic thinking and problem solving, as well as education and degrees and certifications, operations, responsibilities, and expertise, software and device proficiency, and methods and skills proficiency. All of these components represent, in a way, the uh, aspects of our experience which, rep which fold into analytic thinking and problem solving. So we considered those five dimensions to be the foundation of the T-STEM. In addition, on the T-top, we had the specification of areas like project management, organizational design, communications, critical thinking, teamwork, networking, empathy, perspective, and global understanding. And to our way of looking at it, the areas that uh, we've added are organizational design and empathy. We've thought of, of putting those representations on as the T-top. The so our Mighty Me metric is based on the idea that categories that you see in the STEM represent depth and skill, and categories you see across the top represent breadth across systems. Mighty Me begins your T by using AI tools to transfer your LinkedIn profile or your resume into this Champions, unique Champions, David Yellen. Mighty Me framework. Mighty Thank Me you. is an AI tool that will assess your T-shape based on your positions, education, deeds, skills, and tool proficiencies, and find and, and present clear visualizations of your T-shape strengths and weaknesses. It'll identify T-shape gaps based on your score and the top percentile scores in your field and plan specific strategies to address goals related to improving components of your T-score. With Mighty Me, the things you do impact the T-top and the T-STEM scores. From your LinkedIn profile or your resume, we pick up indications of your memberships, your writing, authorships, your national, international meetings, and we map those activities and act, uh, records into the dimensions of the T-top and T-STEM. Here, the stars represent the idea that there is a principal impact of each uh, activity you've done, but the dots represent ancillary um, impacts that occur as well. In addition, we do the same kind of mapping for briefing and briefings and teaching, mentoring and career guidance, organizational roles, critical thinking and role in systems operations and innovation, along with other aspects of your, uh, your, of your uh, resume and, and ex past activities. It results in a metric that shows your T-top composition in terms of the 10 dimensions of the T-top and your T-top scores represented on a, a spider or web chart, as well as the same kind of display for your T-STEM composition, your T-STEM scores. But we can go farther because we have a database now of over 800 ISIP members based on their LinkedIn profiles, which gives us a way to represent your T-score in the percentiles uh, displayed according to the 800 members that we've analyzed from ISIP records, from ISIP's uh, members. The uh, display shows your uh, score relative to your number of years since your last degree or since your first employment, along with the um, uh, 
scores of everyone else in that database. You can look at your total T, your T stem score, your total T top score, and T top components as well, component by component. And we'll demonstrate this to you live uh, in a matter in a little while. You can also, as you progress through uh, time, can look at how your T score changes over time, either in the um, uh, in the T-top or the T-stem. To get started, you're going to register using a link uh, that we will provide you and selecting your LinkedIn profile as the source of the data for your MIT uh, uh, platform. You'll see a screen that looks like this, where you'll select LinkedIn as your um, app, app approach to the system and authorize LinkedIn to uh, deliver your profile to my team. Me. <clears throat> As you get your profile uploaded, you'll see a screen that looks like this, which has a number of labels across the top, representing how my T has assessed from your LinkedIn data, your positions, that is the positions you've held, the education that you've uh, experienced, the deeds, and I'll discuss this more in a minute, your skills and the tools that you have represented. If it's in LinkedIn, the odds are we'll be able to sort it into one of these categories. If it's not there, of course, you can enter this individually, in information individually using screens that we uh, provide for that, for manual entry. Your positions, the first tab, represents a separate record for any paid or voluntary position that lasted more than three months, either full-time or part-time. So this includes not only your work positions, but also your positions with national organizations, local organizations, any voluntary work that you've done. It can also include representations of project assignments that have been longer than three months, committees, and they may be within or outside of another position. For example, if you're a manager of a large area of your company's business, and you are also on a company committee that uh, has a scope of hiring or, or assessing uh, people for positions, that committee assignment is a separate position within your position, within your job and can be separately listed in your position uh, statement. They can be overlapping as well. So positions can uh, have time periods that overlap each other. When you've entered positions and basically um, set up your historical record of positions, you'll see a list of them in your MIT uh, display under the tab positions. Each one of these is clickable. You can left click on any one of the positions. And when you do, the position will open and you can check and enter and update data related to that. Uh, this note uh, mentions that you should keep aware that your T score, T top score and T stem score are displayed on these screens as you proceed. The positions uh, tab when you click on one position opens to this screen, which has three different tabs, one for the organization where the position is located. Um, and this <clears throat> tells you at the top if there are any data elements that need to be completed. It has a sector of focus uh, data collection section where there's a drop down list that you can use to select the appropriate sector for this organization. When you're completed with any data entry, you must click the Save button, which is um, located at the top and bottom of the screen. So uh, clicking the Save button gives you a way to ensure that the data you've entered and selected is going to be retained. There's also a Disposal button, which a Trash button, which allows you to delete the record. And the T scores uh, that are listed here show the scores associated with this particular entry. 
Finally, there's a go back to profile button, which allows you to return to the main uh, profile screen. The second button uh, under position is called position, and it is where you'd record the start and end year. You'd also record your role. Uh, you uh, There's a checkbox to note if it's a pay, paid position. We also are interested in learning about the team size, the multidisciplinary and multicultural makeup of your team. You can, you can re remember that we're looking for these attributes of your work and experience as we go about uh, completing estimates of your T-top score. In addition, on the responsibility side is where you'll indicate the operations responsibilities, critical thinking, and systems and operations innovation score. These are all sliders and are easily uh, moved. They all come up no when you start a position or when you start a record. So you'll have to go and adjust any of them that are not no. <clears throat> Under education, your your institutions of, of where you've attended uh, are going to be listed under this tab. And if you click on one, you'll get information about that particular educational experience where you'll fill in uh, the type of degree, the degree status, whether it's awarded or not, and the major, major field of study. Deeds are uh, quite broad and allow you to represent honors um, represent certificates, licenses, mentoring, writing, awards, conferences, patents, leisure travel, multilingual skills, a variety of different uh, elements can be listed as a deed. Uh, deeds are brought in through LinkedIn, but you'll need to check them and be sure that they are uh, represented correctly. Each one of these uh, areas uh, or types has its own sub menu of specific activities. And those specific activities are what define the deed itself. So you'll, you'll check, these are all drop downs, and you'll pick the one that uh, represents the deed that you're trying to record. Under description, you can copy and paste or type the description of whatever the deed is and have it uh, then saved by the system. Mighty Me also includes a place where you can record skills and tools. Skills are something you can do and you see a representative list. Tools are something that you can use that you have experience and skill uh, with, with using. There's a menu for generating information about uh, skills and tools. It's the same menu. It is interested in your proficiency and the type of proficiency you have, whether you're a basic, intermediate, advanced, or expert user. And each one of these is expanded, as you can see at the bottom of this screen, to indicate the type of concept associated with that word. In this case, of Advanced is 75% efficiency and so forth. In addition, uh, whether or not you have a formal certification for the skill or tool can be entered on this screen. Every enter entry is weighted and accumulated by the Mighty Me system. Weights are standard, but they can be modified by client organizations and within client organizations as necessary. A personal dashboard displays your current scores, scores over time, and comparative scores as you request. Indicators for professional activities to improve scores are provided, and it can be used and updated anytime with new entries and new, for, new uh, information regarding your education, positions, deeds, skills, and tools. So your score continues to grow throughout your career, so to speak. As you um, add things, it increases your T-score. Your T-score is never reduced. Builds It builds a bridge between your strengths and potentials for future development, identifies trends in employee strengths to improve team building and optimize performance, 
can create a structure for effective career coaching to enable more effective career decisions. It's a foundation for personal planning and growth and goals for continuing professional growth and volunteer experiences. In addition, you can look at uh, T-scores comparatively and look at how um, individuals are, are alike and differ and complement each other through their um, pie charts as well as their spider diagrams. There are advantages in that scoring starts immediately and it's automatic. Data can be entered in any order. There's a clear visualization of, every, of a person's strength. It considers complex activities and represents them in the T-STEM and T-TOP uh, paradigm. Quantitative representation of T-scores numerically reflect qualitative aspects to clearly demonstrate strength and weaknesses. And it does maintain a consistency in the scoring and rubric across users. That's the presentation I had wanted to make to you in this brief time. I have time for questions. And I wanted to mention that ISAP members are authorized to use the log on link, which will demonstrate after the end of this uh, session uh, by going to this website, https getmightyme.com. And of course, you can contact me for any further information after, after the session is over. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou. And I think Deb Satterfield has a lot of questions, so I'll ask her to ask questions. I just want to remind people that um, this is the alpha platform that uh, is still under development. There is a survey if you've got ideas for working with Lou and, and the um, company that started around this. Isaac is proud to be the first paying member for the Mighty Me platform, so all Isaac members can use the platform for uh, well, just use it. And uh, we're grateful for that being the first uh, paying customer, Lou. And, uh, but if you, and, and we're please grateful. don't, yeah. And please don't share the link though with people who aren't ISIP members. Uh, ISIP members can freely share it with each other. If there's an organization that wants to contact Lou and become a member so that they can have all their employees or whatever become part of it, that that's fine as well, but contact Lou. And I'll put the reminder contacts in the um, uh, chat while uh, Deb uh, can ask her questions. Deb, do you wanna ask questions or should we go to the next person? No, I'll, I'll go right ahead. Thank you so much. Lou, that was a fabulous presentation and this is a fabulous tool. I love the data viz that you have embedded in it and all the parameters are really interesting. Uh, my, my One of my questions is, how do we make sure that this is used as a tool and not as a weapon? So if it's comparing <laughs> two of us and my score on, uh, you know, maybe leadership is high, but my score on how to use every um, tool in a software package is lower. How do I make sure? Is there a qualitative and quantitative pairing here that would contextualize this uh, properly? Are, are you referring to um, being used as a weapon by others or? I'm not yeah, like sure. if I was doing that in my unit and I can see, oh my gosh, you have a very low score in this area. Oh, I got to take you off that team. Yeah, that's a reasonable, very good question. Thank you very much, Deborah. I, I uh, have uh, built this with the idea that it would be used from the perspective of a, of a positive uh, growth encouragement kind of mindset and that the use to uh, assess uh, individuals relative to team composition and so forth would be done uh, in, a, in a constructive manner. So uh, we could uh, consider ways in which to limit access of this tool across people to only uh. qualified or, or certain individuals so that you would not be able to see my T-shape unless I had authorized you to do that in some manner like that. That's that's a good point and something cool. we we need to build in. Do you think you could build in also maybe all the team? So if there was a team of you, me, and Jim, and all of our stuff is in there so that our right. strengths are actually right. 
Come yeah, on. I see. I, pa it. I see Pavel nodding his head too. Yeah, that was <laughs> something that we did consider early on, was yeah. how to get a get a department, for example, mm -hmm. identified within a company, and so yes, we built in that uh, construct going forward, but. But the first point you made about who's authorized to see everybody, that's a little different. And um, we, we, we will put that on the list. That's definitely something that needs to be done. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. Other question? Um, I see a couple in the chat, so I'll, I'll go ahead and ask them for people. Um, Raise your hand, perhaps, if you want to directly ask Lou the question. If not, I'll read some out of the chat. So, um, and uh, Subu is asking, is there a way to simplify the model and metrics and analysis as presented? This approach seems very engineering intensive. By the way, Lou is not only an Isaac fellow, he's a <laughs> professor of yeah, <laughs> industrial and systems engineering. So that's, that's clear. Um, how do we uh, simplify and customize this, Lou? Do you have thoughts? Um, there may be ways in which we can get to key elements of it in the structure with you know, certain positions, certain deeds, certain skills, you know, some subset that would, would represent um, a, a simplification. But frankly, the way it's designed uh, everything you add to it that represents you and things you've done uh, increases your T-shape, so to speak. So I don't know why you'd want it simpler um, when you could be more detailed. And that's what I'm hoping people will want to use it for, is to represent all the varieties of things that they're doing. Not just their work, by the way, but also their voluntary, voluntary activities in local organizations. They're um, volunteering to mentor. They're volunteering to um, give seminars to high school students in their areas. All the things we do have the potential of further representing us in our T-shape. And that's, that's why I hope that it would be used. The, the forms are relatively simple. Once you get familiar with them, you'll won't ha you won't have any trouble uh, keeping track of what you need to enter for each form. If there's a complexity, it has to do with deeds, where there's many different kinds of deeds, and each type of deed has its own substructure, but I have a... And, and Lou, Lou, I'm yeah. going to just uh, cut you off so we can get Leslie's question and Jeff's question before we uh, end the recording. So, okay. Leslie, uh, you're next, and okay. then Jeff. Thank you. And thank you, Lou, for your presentation um, and understanding your biases on how you're developing this tool. I think there, there's great opportunity, I can imagine, for guiding one's career through this. Um, but I was just wondering a little bit, too, about how this tool is addressing kind of the structured racism in our uh, education or um, career systems. Not everyone has the opportunity for the same types of experiences. Um, so some of that, and also how are you accounting for people that may not be uh, providing truthful responses in the system? Um, for example, people like imposter syndromes or these sorts of things. Um, I, I imagine it would be really interesting instead of just considering um, organizations or corporations that would be using this tool to even be able to get the data to use for um, understanding different schools, for example, like HBCUs or other, other things like that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of the, those well, design features. Yeah, certainly validity of the data is, is a key question and uh, something that we've um, thought about quite a bit. It, that's one of the reasons we've, we've tried to start with the LinkedIn profile as a way to uh, populate the system. But of course, people can add anything to the system right now and represent themselves. The question is, how are they going to use it? So if if you're adding things just to see the number go up uh, for yourself, that's, that's fine, but it doesn't really bother anyone else, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, with, you know, with 800 people in the database, uh, the, the percentiles are not going to change 
very much relative to one person's uh, misusing the tool and bumping up their score inadvert, you know, uh, on purpose uh, without. And then the second thing is if you do use it with someone's, um, with someone who is trying to help you or someone who is trying to uh, team with you, and it's realized that a lot of things on your T score are not really true, then that comes back at you in another way. So I really don't see the purpose of trying to, there's no th nothing at the end of this trail that represents um, a reward, so to speak, for getting to the top. We haven't gamified it. So we haven't said, you know, get your T score, your T top higher by 20 points this week. That's not the mentality yet. <laughs> Uh, okay. Although I'm in, engaged in yeah. Wordscape, I'm engaged in Wordscape, and that does. Do and I it. and I I, I, I will <laughs> try to get Jeff's question in before Thank we you, end. So Go we're ahead. we're a little Sorry. over, so we'll try Thank to you, be Leslie. brief. Yeah, we Thank can you, talk Leslie. about this further if you'd like to contact me. Absolutely, yeah. Lou. Jeff, I go ahead. It's good to see all of you. And Lou, you've been working on this for a very long time. So congratulations on your diligence and on this tool. I'm very pleased to see your progress. My question, I'm a career coach, so I'm looking at how LinkedIn has been utilized or can be utilized for job applicants as well as career transition. And I think this tool would be very helpful for somebody looking at their career and uh, making themselves known. And with that spirit, I think the recommendation section is probably the least utilized and most important in the LinkedIn and is there a way to qualitatively, uh, in, one, teach people how to get recommendations from credible people, and two, be able to integrate qualitative as well as quantitative. In other words, the number of recommendations is not as relevant as the qualities that are being stated in the recommendations that give the candidate uh, a lot of credibility. And so that's an area I believe um, would be very helpful to make this tool more useful for those that are seeking to use it for their own um, purposes. I agree. Um, and in fact, I think we are in, engaged with uh, the recommendation section. I think that's part of where we pick up um, deeds from LinkedIn. So um, we, we are downloading the entire profile. And uh, I if Pavel's still here, uh, could you confirm, Pavel, or not the idea that uh, recommendations are being downloaded with this profile? Um, as of right now, it's not something we are. It's not okay. Processing, but we. Okay. I think so. Then, good. in that case, yes, it would be a very important. Aspect well, to if I on. may, uh, it's one thing that somebody says uh, that Jeff Saperstein wrote fifteen uh, recommendations and papers, and qualitative, quantitatively in their recommendation said, you know, he came in at time and he was on budget. But more importantly, if you could do a tutorial, Pavel, on how to what should be in a recommendation that shows things that are the intangibles like their character their diligence their ability to get things done their curiosity yeah. all the things that jim talks about regularly when he mentors would be wonderful to teach people how to fill out get those recommendations and then use those recommendations not in just a listing of deeds but a way of showing the whole person if i if i can put that in as a suggestion yeah. thank you very much jeff uh, that's a great great yeah. pointer I think we'll, Great. Uh, we'll and, definitely follow uh, it up. Absolutely. And thank you all. I'm going to stop the recording now, but let's thank Lou before I stop the recording. <laughs> Thumbs up and cheers. Thank and, you so uh, much, everyone. It's very great to those, see everybody here. For those who want to stick around and talk to Lou more, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to stop the recording, though, and we'll get this posted and emailed out to everybody who registered.